Humankind is an upcoming strategy game that could genuinely be a good contender to the Civ games. We got our hands in a cheeky little preview on it and it's got a lot going for it that will certainly turn a few heads. Rather than uploading a straight up gameplay video, we've put together a list of some of the things that make this game different to any Civ games you might have played in the past. First up we have culture. Amplitude's approach with humankind is to make you choose a new culture for your civilization each time you progress into a new era as opposed to choosing a civilization at the start and having to play with them throughout the entire game. In humankind you all start from the same blank slate, with a customizable avatar representing you as a sort of detached leader through the ages. Societies tend to evolve according to the natural and social surroundings, so ones with fewer military rivals nearby and lots of lush, arable land might move towards a peaceful agricultural society. As you advance to the next era, the choices widen and as such so do the specialisations within them, with things like commerce, order and aesthetics coming into play. This gives players a bit more to play with and adds more variety to the game as you progress. On top of the change in approach to culture, there's also a big change when it comes to winning, being that there's actually only one victory condition in the game, which is having the most fame. Fame is earned by collecting era stars, which is a type of reward given for completing specific objectives over the course of the match. These also gate your progress from one era to the next, so for example, when starting with a single nomadic tribe in the Neolithic era, in order to advance to the ancient era, you'd need to get a certain number of era stars. More generally, you can pick up era stars for specific feats as you go and for cumulative tasks like earning a star for winning a certain number of military victories during an era, then another for a greater number of victories, and so on until eventually you win the game. As for combat, instead of the surface level battles that effectively auto-resolve in games like Civilization or the fully tactical XCOM-like turn-based ones on separate maps that you get in an Age of Wonders, Humankind has a kind of turn-based on-map hybrid. When units fight each other, an area around them is blocked out on the map and you enter a turn-based battle. The aggressor has to either wipe out all enemy units in three turns or capture a little flagged point that's marked on one of the tiles which the defender has to try and hold. Essentially, every conflict leaves one side's army either entirely wiped out or very nearly depleted, which is significant when it could be a stack of four you just lost and how much time or money it can cost to produce each one. In Humankind, the map is split up into the usual hexagonal tiles, but also into larger pre-marked regions. As soon as you build a city in a region, that entire region is under your control, and enemies can't build there. You can then build tile improvements anywhere in that large region to exploit its resources. It means the early game is all about quickly rushing to claim as much land as possible first by building outposts on it, then by upgrading those outposts to cities themselves. It's a different way of thinking about the map and means cities are generally much more spread out, with their actual positioning within the region slightly less important than they would be in Civ. The final difference is a bit more philosophical, but humankind has opted to move away from a more individualist view on history where big moments and discoveries come as a result of individual genius towards a more collectivist approach. There are no great people in humankind and likewise no named leaders. It's all about what your overall civilization does, from adapting your culture to the world around you to how decisions you make within game events affect your people's ideology. It's a refreshing global approach that may mix things up more than we really expect. But those were just a handful of highlights that make Humankind stand out from other strategy games. The game has much, 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 much more to offer and you'll be able to find that all yourself when Humankind makes its debut.